That was the summer of 100 days where it never got below 100 degrees, even at night. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm in Tennessee. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, y'all. How is everybody? Hey, Patricia. Hi. Becky's You're lurking here. in the background. I see Kia's here, too. Oh, is she? And, oh, yeah, there I see it now. Uh-huh. Casey in the sunshine. A little again. dark. Hi there. How is everybody? Hey, Kia. Good. How are you? I'm awesome. I hate to hear that about your, your AC mic. Thank you. It's too hot for that. Yeah, at least I have some fans that work. <laughs> That's what it's going to have to be. We're all big fans of yours, Mike. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Speaking of hot air. <laughs> Is your AC out, Gene? It's oh, it's Mike. Mike. No, Mike. Oh, Mike. I told him to weed it around the unit and just hit a few of those wires and it'd go off. <laughs> Or put your head in the refrigerator, <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> One of those should work. <laughs> no, I'm afraid that would go bad if I tried to do that. <laughs> I've got 628. I guess we'll start in a minute or two. Um, I'm happy that uh, we are now live on Facebook and yeah. we are on Zoom. And I see Kia here and Jean and Patricia and Mike. And I welcome you all. I don't know who else will be here today, but uh, we're going to, I've got a little uh, PowerPoint. Um, I'll keep it brief, but our our conversation last week was really fruitful. Uh, for those of you, what's the time? It's, it's 6.29. So I want to welcome everybody. We're going to be starting in just a second. Um, last week, we talked about heaven and uh, we we struggled with the different conceptions of Christian afterlife. And it seemed like a good idea since we kind of pinpointed the, one of the problems, and that is that most Christians believe that your soul leaves or your spirit leaves your body when you die. And it goes to, quote, directly to heaven. It goes to heaven. And um, I didn't find that in Scripture. And so we were talking last week about, about well, how come Christians believe that their soul leaves their body at death? And there is one verse that's very well and uh, used and frequently used at funerals, and um, that one verse is uh, read as support that we uh, that our spirits leave our bodies at death. Um, it's strange that that's the one we include in our funerals um, when Paul talks everywhere else and, and in all other places about nothing but the resurrection of the body. He says nothing about the immortality of the soul or souls leaving bodies. So. I thought we'd look at the one verse that's often used. Well, it's it, there's one other verse that's I'm aware of that sort of is also used sometimes by exegetes to try to support this idea. But this is the verse that everyone quotes to prove that your soul leaves your body when you die. And I thought we would look at that in context because, hey, what a novel idea, Gino. <laughs> and what's our T-shirt going to say? It, it every all things. Oh, a verse are you taken muted? out of context? I was. Oh yeah. I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. Well, <laughs> you can even you you can even make your soul go to heaven uh, if you have the right verse taken out of context. So, well, um, what I thought I would do, if you all are willing to go ahead and get started, is is show you that verse, explain a little bit about it, and then we'll discuss and see where we are. Okay. Okay. Hey. Anything before we get started? I don't like my color with this lighting. May I just see if I can get <laughs> a little bit dark on the um, screen? I can't even see myself. Well, you can do what you want to, but the minute you turn that down, you're going to um, you're going to make it worse. I think. Well, you can try to bring it around here, maybe. Let's see. It will help me a little bit there. It might. Yeah, I think a little bit more. Yeah, at least I can see my face. Unless it changes. It was fun. So we've got the windows open, the lights are all on, and the problem yeah. is I'm too white. You are. It should be dark. <laughs> it hits my face you and it, it, it darkens the screen. And then I guess because my ancestors were born in fjords, yeah. 
Coming in Norway. It's supposed to be black. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we, got, we got Heather with us. Oh, we got Heather with us too. Okay, so Heather, I'm about to share a screen here um, with a little bit of luck. Hey, Heather. And uh, we're going to see this girl leaving her body, and I'm going to try to put it on um, slideshow so that we can see it together. And we're going to start from the beginning. And so, and I guess I'll move this up here. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see the screen? How does that look to y'all? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Good. I can Thank actually you. see every single one of you across the top up there, but mm -hmm. you may not be able to see them at all in, on your screen. I don't know. It, it usually only shows the person who's talking. Mm -hmm. but, I can see everybody. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, does the soul or spirit leave the body at death? This is the theological term for this is the immortality of the soul. All right. And uh, Gene, will you do the honors? I can do all things. Verse taken out of context. Mm -hmm. And now you want the verse? Sure. While we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We would rather be away from the body and at home. With the Lord. All right. Those are. Uh... This, this message has been brought to you by <laughs> Rock United Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> been brought to you by Gillette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good as a man can get, as the commercial used to say. Remember that? Do you remember that commercial? You, that commercial would never make it on TV today. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Phrases with two, uh, these within 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 6b, and 8b. Okay. Now, doesn't that kind of look like? While we're still in our bodies before we die, we see how we're reading into it. We are away from the Lord because the Lord way up in heaven somewhere. Okay. Right. And then we would rather be away from our body, leave our body, and then go up into heaven to be with the Lord. We're going to go to heaven to be with you. Can see how easily, especially if you already believe it, that that how else would you interpret that? Right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I acknowledge. Mm -hmm. That at first glance, but what about context? What's what's the subject of this chapter? What is Paul writing about to whom and why? It makes a big difference. All right, this is the context. Let's read the actual verses, verse 6 and verse 8, all right? And I've left in red the, the ones that we're looking at, but now you can see the rest of the verses, all right? So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. And as I wrote at the bottom, these words are held up by most Christians as proof of your immortal, immortal soul leaving your body and going, going to heaven when you die. And that is that how you've always read that? And the answer to that question for me is, well, until I became a pastor, yes. Until I did exegesis on this verse, yes. When I did exegesis on this verse, I saw that I was wrong. So that's what I want to show you. All right, so again, context. How does 2 Corinthians 5 begin? What's this chapter about? How does it begin? Well, let's look at the very <clears throat> first eight verses, and we'll see it in context. I need somebody to volunteer to read. Is there someone who would be willing to do so for me? I will. And, and take your time. Yes. Yes. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk, by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body 
and at home with the Lord. Does that change anything to read it in context? Uh, Y'all are muted. Yeah, Gene. Changes everything. I didn't hear you because you were muted. Oh, yeah. I, I was talking to Becky and I forgot you couldn't hear me. Okay. It, it changes the whole thing. Okay. So what changed? Instead of talking about how life is now and how we're away from God and want to be with God, it has nothing to do with what happens when we die. What does it have to do with? Now. Okay. You now see. You. Exactly. Okay. Here and now, not hereafter. All right. And is there a particular verse or phrase in there that helped you to see that? Verse four, while we were still in this tent, which is so ironic for a tent maker, traditionally, to use the body as a metaphor, you know, the tent as a metaphor for the body. I just yeah. think that's fabulous. Hit, hit the pause button. Yeah. Okay. Here's a tent maker using tents as a metaphor for, for uh, the earthly body. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, that, I think that uh, this this actually helps address what I was telling you earlier. I, I've been thinking about this. Uh, that's that's kind of fresh for me. Um, maybe partly because you know I lost my daughter in September, and um, you know, and the way she died. Uh, though that was not painful, um, you know, she donated her organs and and then was cremated after that. So, you know, you want to mentally, as you prepare for death, you want to know for sure, that, you know, that your, your consciousness is not still there at all by the time whatever is done to your body after you're gone. Mm -hmm. So there has to be kind of a disassociation from the body so that, you know, I don't have to worry about what happens there. I'm good. You see what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you, when you say it has to be a disassociation, I just want to clarify. Do you mean that um, there has to be a dissociation in order for you to have peace or in order for there be, to be an afterlife or, or in order to cope? All of the above, you know, because because if 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 all of your present moment focus is on the fear of all those things, you know, happening to your body when that's been what you've identified as yourself your whole life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but but you like growing up, I didn't hear much about the new body versus the old body. I, you know, I I've heard that more from you uh, because I see the importance of that now. If if we're looking at, you know, how Jesus died and how the resurrection happened. And um, so that has become a bigger deal to me. Because I know you have to let go of the old body. It, it's not any better to be in a box in the ground even than being cremated. You know, it, it, both of those you, you, you don't want for yourself. That does not, that does not seem peaceful. Hmm. And, you know. I just think it, it, there's got to be some mental way that we're ready to let go of our body as a part of who we are. Does it make any difference to you, Mike, to think about Gracie as being alive right now uh, in a spirit form, having gone to heaven versus in a physical resurrected form in the future? as long as she's alive. I think either way, if, if there is still a present consciousness <clears throat> there for her, whether there's a body or not, is not a huge deal for me. Partly, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at thinking abstractly. Uh, but, you know, if that's not the case, you know, it, 
having a picture of what she looked like, that's how, you know, that's how you tend to think of, okay, that was Gracie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so seeing that image of who she was when she was alive, uh, kind of is a package for that identity that we knew as her. And so that package, it, I think it helps us mentally to think in terms of the resurrection of the body because that way the whole package is there integrated with what everything we knew as her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the two options that we're mainly looking at tonight are immortality of the soul and resurrection of the body. And most Christians believe in immortality of the soul, not the resurrection of the body. If you ask them what happens when they die, they will tell you the soul lives their body and it goes to heaven immediately. Okay, that's what most Christians that I know believe. Uh, and that's what I heard growing up, although my dad was not altogether clear about that. And I don't remember exactly what he said. Um, and I don't remember him emphasizing resurrection on the last day. I think maybe... You know, back in the 60s, maybe they were avoiding preaching about those kinds of things and were just kind of sticking with the civil rights movement and so many and the Vietnam War and so many other crises that were hitting Atlanta at the time that my dad was a pastor. I, yeah. I don't know. He didn't, he didn't talk about pie in the sky by and by a lot. He talked about how can we do social justice now? Right. That was my dad's focus, helping people to see the justice issue around social rights. Yeah. Uh, was important to him and he met with dr king and all of that you know what happens when we what happens when you die you know you know does your spirit leave your body do, are you raised on the last day with everybody else i don't remember him talking about that as much and i don't have so i can't tell you but those are the two options i want to think about i want to think about dad who passed right before gracie did and uh, my grandparents who all died back in the 80s except for one which died back in the 30s. Um, uh, I want to think about them, uh, you know, and and think in terms of, okay, well, one option we're looking at is their souls left their bodies when they died, and they are right now with Jesus spiritually. They're not, they don't have a body, which is an odd thing to try to imagine since Jesus does have a body. Right. At any rate, that aside for a moment, the other option would be for us to be not our souls leaving our body, but to be raised from the dead on the last day with everybody else. And so we go from the day of our death becoming the day of our resurrection, and everybody has the same resurrection day. It's like everybody having the same birthday. We'll all be reborn together, as Paul put it. Um, the whole creation is groaning in birth pains for the birth of the children of God, and that's us. And the birth of the children of God and the birth of the new creation is the resurrection on the last day when the creation will be reshaped and redeemed. But so, so back to Gracie, um, two options present themselves, and one we heard most of our lives, as you said, solely body goes straight to heaven. Be with Jesus. Um, the other option is resurrection day, resurrection of the body on the last day. Everyone is raised. Which one of those is biblical is what we're looking at. Where do these two ideas come from? And, and which one, which one is, is Paul talking about in these red letters? We know that while we were at home in the body, it, it, is he talking about the soul leaving the body? Is he talking about, um, I'm, I'm going to need to move to this just for a second. Not, not that, this. Okay. So I I'm not going to read all these, and I don't want you to read all these, but I just want you to know that I collected all the sayings where Jesus, where Paul talked about afterlife. He didn't, he didn't talk about the soul. He doesn't talk about the spirit leaving the body. All he talks about is resurrection, raised, raised body, bodily, raised, raised bodily. Look, look at the third, look at the uh, second one at the top, Romans 6, 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
it's very difficult to say I believe in the immortality of the soul or my soul leaving my body when Paul writes that we're going to be raised like Jesus, period. And he says it over and over again that we're going to be raised bodily, that he was raised bodily, the resurrection is physical, we are going to rise. There's nothing much there about anything else. It's So that, that's why it's problematic um, in, uh, for those who might believe that. Now, now where's, where's our verse? Where's our verse? It's hiding at the bottom. I'm going I'm to highlight it in red. Well, now it won't let me do it. Hang on. There. Okay, so there's our highlight. So in all these verses, Paul's talking about resurrection on the last day. And in this one, he has two. It's just not as evident at first because he left out the details because he figured you could figure out the context, I guess. Look at number. Look at Romans 8, 18 toward the top. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 14, the next one, and God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. I don't see the immortality of the soul. I see the resurrection of the body and everything that Paul writes. I, I see one, not the other. Um, so, yes, Paul wrote about being at home in the body, away from the body. And isn't that proof that your soul leaves your body um, and goes to heaven when you die? All right, two questions for you. Where is the word soul in Paul's words? Where's the word soul in that chapter? He mentions spirit, but only in terms of the Holy Spirit. So he doesn't talk about spirits leaving bodies. So when he talks about the afterlife, he doesn't use the word soul or spirit, except to use the word spirit to refer to the Holy Spirit. Number two, why would Paul abandon the resurrection of the body in these short red words up here while holding to it everywhere else and in everything else he wrote? What is Paul really saying? He's saying your present earthly body is like a temporary tent. The word is literally skenos, tent. This body's a tent. We live in it. And it's going to die just like tents wear out. And we have to lug it around everywhere we go. Like you have to haul around a tent every time you move to a new place in the wilderness. Like a nomad, you know, like a nomadic shepherd. Remember, Paul was a tent maker. That's how he made money. He sold tents. All right. Then number four, your mortal tent body will be transformed into an immortal house body. It's better to have a house than a tent. In a tent, you're stuck wandering around. It's it's a junky place to live in. It wears out. It leaks, you know, and eventually pretty quickly, you know, from setting it up and putting it down and setting it up and taking it down throwing it over your animal and going, I mean, finally it just wears out. And guess what the women are doing every day until that happens? So in the next tent. That's no way to live. What about a permanent house? How about an estate? How about this body being immortal, imperishable? Right? Your house will be better than your tent because your tent is mortal. Your house is not. It's immortal, if that makes any sense. Let's revisit 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8 one more time and check it out. Now, I've added the red comments to remind you what he means by tent. Let's see if this is going to make more sense. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 8. We're going to start with 1 through 4, and you can see a Bedouin tent from the um, late 19th century on the left. Um, it's made from goat hair, and they're usually black. For we know that if this earthly tent, that is, the mortal body we live in, is destroyed by death, this is what he's implying, we have a building from God, a house, an immortal body, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent, in this mortal body, we groan, longing to be clothed, that is, housed, in our heavenly dwelling, our immortal bodies. If indeed, when we have taken it, the tent, off, in death, we will not be found naked without a dwelling. A dwelling. Paul's perspective on your not having a body is to not have a home. 
if you don't have a body, you're homeless. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be found naked. You want a dwelling. <clears throat> and we're going to lose the tent. So what's God going to do about it? He's going to change the tent into a house. He says in the verse four, for while we are still in this tent, in this mortal body, we groan under our burden of hauling around our tent body because we wish not to be unclothed without a body, but to be further clothed with an immortal house body so that what is mortal, the tent body, may be swallowed up by life, the immortal house body. And now this is key. Again, in parenthesis, I didn't highlight it, but in parenthesis are my comments. He who has prepared us for this very thing, the resurrection of our bodies, is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee, so we are always confident. He means by that the Holy Spirit. That's why it's capitalized in most versions of the English Bible, just like God is capitalized or Jesus is capitalized. Even though we know that while we are at home, the word is endemio. It means dwelling, living inside of. And while we are living inside of this human body, this mortal tent body, we are away from the Lord who dwells in an eternal house body. We don't have one yet. For we walk by faith. That is, we trust now that this is going to happen, that we will live forever, that we will be with him bodily forever. We trust. We have faith that that's going to happen, not sight, because we haven't seen it happen yet, because until the tent dwellers become house dwellers, we cannot be face to face with the house with a house dwelling physically resurrected Lord. The resurrection day is the day on which we all become like him. We see him as he is face to face. And then we will know not by trust or faith, but by sight. Because we will see him face to face as he is. Yes, we do have confidence, verse 8. And we would rather be away from the mortal tent body and at home with the Lord who is in an immortal house body. And we get one like his so we can be with him. That's the point. Our confidence is our being with him and being human together with him. This is Paul's metaphor for resurrection. Our tent is going to be this body is going to be turned into a house, an immortal body. And it's better to have a house than a tent. Who wants to live in a tent for the rest of their lives? All right. On the right, you can see um, a 2,500-year-old object made in Greece. This is Sharon. He's the boatman in Greek mythology. He's the pagan deity who ferries the shades or souls or spirits of the recently deceased to Hades, the underground pagan mythological realm of the dead. This is where souls leaving bodies come from, comes from. This is 500 years before the time uh, of Jesus. Now, Paul writes of only one afterlife, the resurrection of the body. Strangely, almost every Christian rejects this. They prefer the immortality of the soul, the spirit leaving the body. Unwittingly, they are rejecting scripture for pagan mythology. So immortality of the soul, the ancient pagan belief that at death, the soul leaves the body. Body-soul dualism comes from the Greek and Roman mythology. The, uh, their ancient pagan belief in the soul leaving the body is incompatible with the resurrection of the body found in Christian scripture. In Greco-Roman pagan mythology, number one, the body is bad and the soul is good or spirit. The pure soul or spirit is in, or shade is, in, is imprisoned in the corrupt body. The soul escapes when the filthy body dies, and the soul is destined for a cycle of reincarnations and new bodies. In Christian scripture, the human body isn't evil. It's made by God and declared good. It isn't a prison for the soul. It isn't separable from the soul. It is resurrected and perishable on the last day with, the, with our bodies. We fully human, body, soul, spirit, Mind, all, everything that we are is resurrected. From the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. It's shocking to me how many people say that every Sunday morning. And then when I tell them that their soul 
leaving their body uh, is a pagan mythological idea. They look at me like I'm crazy. The Nicene Creed also confirms this. It writes, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. One more time. For we know that if the earthly tent, the mortal body we live in is destroyed by death, we have a building from God, a house, an immortal body, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home, in demio, dwelling in the body, the mortal tent body, we are away from the Lord who dwells in an eternal house body. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body, the mortal tent body, and at home, in demio, dwelling with the Lord in an immortal house body like his. The end. Now I need to stop sharing. And I need to bring up Facebook. There's our Facebook people. And there we are back together. Okay, everybody. Um, I hope that didn't take too long. Um, it took me a little less than 30 minutes. Um, okay. Where does where does that take us in the conversation? Does that change anything for anybody? So it's very convincing. Um, as I listened, and I was really trying to listen intently. Um, my question is: So we're spirit, soul, and body right now. Once I die, then what happens to my spirit? Okay. So when you use words, let me back up just a little. When you when people use words like "once I die," now look at the word "once." It presumes the passage of time. It happens in time. It may have happened once in the past. It may happen once in the future. But you're saying once I die, mm -hmm. then what happens to my spirit? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm suggesting there's a different way to think about time. So there aren't any wants. So, OK, Grace, we were, talk, we were referencing Gracie and your dad. Where, where, where are their spirits right now? In the resurrection, and their spirits are not separated from their bodies. They are resurrected people in the future. A future that we can't see from here, but is there. So the spirits are with them, even though the body is rocked and only the, maybe I, the bones or whatever, whatever is left. I don't think the Bible would use that language. The spirit is with them, their spirits are with them. We are spirits. We are spirit bodies. We are human. We are minds. We are consciousness. We are people. We are, I mean, there, there's no breaking these into parts. It's not like a car that has an engine and tires. It doesn't have different parts. We don't have different parts. We're whole human beings, and that includes everything that we are, mind, body, and spirit. There is no wants, and there is no separation. So that's hard to fathom. I know. I mean, that I know. the spirit is still. Let's go. With, let's see what other people. Still with the with the individual after they. I didn't say that when they die. No, you, at, after is a time word. Well, what is it? Yes. Can you say it without using time words? I don't know how to say it without using time I, words. Like I you know. know. If so, if so, you so you're dead. I'm thinking about him right now. Okay, he's no longer here with us in body and it, right. So. I'm wondering where is he? Yes. Where is he right now? Well, Patricia, I, we've got a whole panel here to discuss it. And I've, I've given my answer a million times. And it's very difficult for me to explain. And I'm doing my best. Okay. I, I hear you. So, where where is Minky or where is Dad or where is Grace or where is your dad? Mm -hmm. Where are they right now? Mm -hmm. Well, they're in the same place that everybody on planet Earth is that's ever lived and ever will live. They're in all the places of their life. Every now of our lives is still in this universe. We think they're gone, but the past is still there and the future is there. The Bible says so. And Einstein and the science says so. So you, when you're talking about the resurrection of the dead, we're talking about a place that is beyond what we think of in terms of normal time. It's eternity. 
And from eternity, you can see all slices of space time. And they all exist. It's just that in our mortal existences right now, in our tiny, short lifespans, we can't see the past. It's a memory. And we can't see the future because we don't know what's going to happen next. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Now, here's one, one example that might help. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection, just like most people today don't. Okay? Mm -hmm. they, say, they say it in the creed, but they don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, they said, well, in the resurrection, that is, in the future, when the resurrection, on resurrection day in the future, this woman married you know, like seven brothers. So which one's her husband now? They were trying to trick him. Mm -hmm. And they said, and in Jesus's answer, he refused to refer to the resurrection in the future tense. He, he says, in the resurrection right now, people are not married. Well, if the resurrection hasn't happened yet, why is he talking about it in the present tense? Because it exists in this universe. It's just ahead of us. It's in a future we can't see yet, and we're in it. We just haven't arrived yet. Now, all those yet words don't matter, because when you die, you're there. All right? So is, so is Minky in the ground? Yeah. Is Minky in the resurrection? Yeah. But Minky is also... In the nursing home, sitting in a wheelchair, watching Wheel of Fortune. She's also watching my mom get married. She's also learning to ride a bike. She's also being born. These are in the universe. And so I'll shut up now. I'm going to add a twist to that. There are also people who a lot nowadays that didn't used to happen so much because medical technology was not where it is now. But all the people that are having near death experiences now, you know, that adds a different twist too. that like when when you're physically been diagnosed as dead and then some period of time lapses when you're in, still in that state. But then you come back and you have memories of things that happened you know, during that time. And, and assuming that those experiences are real, that could, uh, people are assuming that's an example of your spirit leaving your body. But what if it's exam an example of your resurrected self become coming, watching your own death? Absolutely. Your resurrected self watching your own death. Yeah. Why not? Why not? What's, why is that spookier than spirits leaving bodies? People talk about ghosts and they think that resurrection spooky. They believe in ghosts. Right. <laughs> I just believe in the resurrection on the last day. I can't believe in both. I find that I cannot believe in both. And I think what people are experiencing when they experience ghosts or, or see a loved one or have a visitation from a loved one is that they're actually seeing the resurrected person if they're seeing anything other than a dream or uh, a waking uh, uh, wishful thinking or a hallucination of some kind. So, I mean, I think. Mike, you brought up a, a really good point about um, near-death experiences because um, I've heard of many. Um, I know my godmother, when she was dying, she had an experience of going through this tunnel and in and seeing this bright, bright light and a lot mm -hmm. of green pastures kind of thing. And um, and then I've heard of other stories where people were ab above their bodies looking down and seeing what was happening. And, um, and then they tell what what they saw was happening in that room at the time, and and they were correct. The uh, the doctors and nurses would verify. Supposedly, how did, how did they see that? Supposedly, I've done some research on that, but there are also people who write books about going to heaven and going to hell. I mean, who do you believe? Right. All I'm saying is. If those kinds of events happen, there's a possible other alternative. Yeah. Or so, can, yeah, so, something kind of in Your between. resurrected self is seeing your body. Yeah. And maybe something in between the old body and the new body. But like, they're not like resurrected the, yet because they're still here. Yeah. Not if they're dead. So, I mean, so we call them near-death experiences because they're like in this middle, this 
passage, so to speak, and they go and kind of come back. And then, you know, when they when, when they hear the stories, you know, we've been doing hard compressions for the last 30 minutes, you know, what what it, what happened with you? And people have different experience of what they see or what, yeah. they, what, what, what it felt yeah. like. Yeah, I think it's, but, but here's the thing is that I've always felt it like, especially in the last 20 years, I felt like it's a waste of time to speculate uh, and tell ghost stories. This is ghost stories. This is Haunted House. This is horror movies. We all like a good horror movie, you know, and it's not fair. It, it's not it's fair. fair. It's not fair to the it's not fair to our faith for us to sit around and go to the self-help section or the psych section or the mythology section and buy a book on astral projection and spirits leaving bodies and say, oh, well, that's sure. That's Christian. Well, I don't I've got to say, Bible. I had a experience when my mother died. And it was so, it's scriptural. She was laying there and imminent and started saying, where are they? Come on, come. Y'all come, y'all come soon, come soon. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Revelations at the end of Revelations, it says. Marana, it says Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Come, amen. Yes, I'm coming soon. Amen, come. Hallelujah. And, and I'm like, I know what she was waiting on because, I mean, I know Revelations is not, you know, literal probably, but it has given me comfort through the years to read those last few verses of Revelations and know that she was like, they're coming. Why don't they come on? And it says, I'm glad to hear, I'm glad to hear that. As a mm -hmm. chaplain, I had some people have I heard about some experiences too. I had one lady ask me, she said, My old drunk George, Uncle George, who, who died of liver poisoning, he was mean as a snake, and he's the one who came to get me. Why didn't they send mama? <laughs> I love mama. They sent old Uncle George. And she asked Uncle George, and apparently my memory is, is that, she, that Uncle George told her, well, they figured you'd believe me. <laughs> yeah, that is great. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. Love it's it. very mysterious. Um, and um, I have questions. Uh you know, I, I hear your exegesis around uh, the verse, and I just keep thinking about what it says it leaves the, um, what was the piece in red you know, with the body? And I just, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm so baffled. Yeah, I know. I'm so baffled um, because I have lots of questions. I, I, I know the time piece is important in this. Um, you know, as I said, that last week understand. with the concept of the timepiece, but I think, in, you know, outside of that, um, with our bodies being a tent, and what's the last part of the verse again? Um, away from the Lord, with the Lord, and away from the Lord means... Yeah, being away from the Lord means what? Like being away... That means we're alive right now, and we don't get to see him. But when, when we're raised on the last day, we can see him. We'll see him. We'll be like him. We, we can't see him now. We'll see him when we're like him. It's what Paul says Jesus told him. So if, if we could do a memory wipe and get rid of a lot of this stuff that we think we've heard and we think we believe, and actually just for the first time with fresh eyes and fresh ears, read and hear it. Yeah. Change how we see it. It would, I think. I mean, uh, I, I know you want to talk about this too, Mike, and I'll shut up. But I think that that's why Dr. Craddock always told me that exegetically to think in terms of a naive reading. You know, come to the text and pretend, at least do the best that you can to pretend that you don't know what this means and you've never heard it before. Now read it and what to say. Exegete it. Do your research. Find out what it says without your presumptions because as I've said many times, I mean, the biggest barrier to Christianity today is Christ, to, to following Jesus is, is Christianity and Christians who are, are making assumptions and false statements. Uh, it, it's like a conversation that if you're half listening and already arguing in your head about what you're going to say 
when the other person takes a breath, right. you're not listening. Right. What'd you say? Uh, what? <laughs> I'm getting a cat, redheaded cackle behind me. I heard the redheaded cackle. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It is. Um, I knew I was in trouble uh, at one of my churches when I was doing a presentation um, of some kind after I got back from teaching in uh, Turkey and Greece. And uh, I was in a relatively new church for me. And, and uh, I, I said that, you know, we believe in the resurrection of the body. And, it, and uh, I was showing them some of the temples at Pergamum in, in, uh, in Turkey and showing them about immortality of the soul and how the ancient Greeks understood the afterlife. And when I said that we believe in the resurrection of the body, not sp spirits or souls leaving the body at death, she stopped me and she said, what did you just say? I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Some people just aren't ready to, uh, to hear facts. They've just got, they think they got it figured out and they, they're going to assume that this crazy preacher has to be a nut and wrong. All that junk you learned in seminary. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's one of them liberals. <laughs> well, it's difficult when you talk about, like we talk about our earthly bodies, our tent here, and then we die and that tent gets buried or, or uh, cremated or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people to realize the time factor and how, you know, there's no telling how many times you've left a body um, in the time of you were born, you were, you lived, you died, and you're now in eternal life. Um, that's hard to put your mind around until you think of Jesus, the whole thing, in is supernatural. I mean, it's like things we don't, we really aren't supposed to understand exactly how all that happened. No, I mean, Paul, uh, Paul got just the basics from Jesus. And we, we, I don't know, nobody knows. You know, I mean, Paul admitted, we don't know what it's going to be like. But I know this for sure, because Jesus told me we're going to be like him. Now, if we're going to be like him, we can start to make some, you know, we can start to look at him and see what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. He could pop into any time or space he wanted to. That was really special. But at the same time, he had a human body and he ate and had scars. So we'll probably be like that. I mean, we'll be physical. We can eat if we want to. We can do physical things if we want to. Probably anything that we want to. But we also won't be bound by time and space the way that we are now. You know, Bert, part of this is hard for me because I, I remember having a, a powerful aha moment the first time I heard somebody say, we are not physical beings trying to learn to be spiritual. We are spiritual beings trying to learn to live in a physical body. Um, yeah, that sounds that sounds like a pagan or a Gnostic. Okay. It, it, did you hear that at some point? Yeah, and I, I think, and and it's it's antithetical to my understanding of the of the human body, both in Jew, Jewish scripture and Christian scripture. I don't know. There was something freeing to me about it when I heard it. But we're spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, that that's. But yeah, I like what you're trying to say, Mike, because it it. it you want to affirm that we are our spirit, you know, that we have soul, a soul, that we're not just animals. You and that's in fact that. how we unite. With but your statement God. presumes they're separatable. Right. And the scriptures don't. <laughs> and yet we have to at, for in the life we're in right now. Why? Because we know this body will either go in the ground or be burned or something. And, and, and it's going to rot regardless of however it... But if we get a new body, when does our spirit leave our body? If we immediately get a new body, if we fast forward immediately at our deaths to Resurrection Day, and we are physical, when did our souls leave our bodies? 
our physical body, our tent is changed. There's a transformation, not a trip. We're not taking a trip. Right. Trips take time and distance. That's the hard thing is to get the time factor. Take the the time factor out. We go from a we go from a mortal body to an immortal body. There is no soul leaving body. We ch- we are changed. Paul says, "In the twinkling of an eye, we are changed." Yeah, that's we're true. not molting. Yeah, we're, we're not. We're not, we're not shedding, shedding skin. We're not shedding skin. We're not molting. <laughs> One of the things I love step. is is Messiah. You know, um, what did you say, Kathy? I said we're just taking a step. I mean, we're just like moving from here to here. We're, just going. we're stepping yeah. out to a new place. I mean, it's almost like trying well, to explain it, what is the Trinity? What is God? What is the Holy Spirit? I mean, is, part of this is just we're dealing with stuff as human beings. We just cannot wrap our brain around unless we have faith and trust in what we're hearing in the scriptures and understand yes time true. factors and stuff and kathy if i could make it easier i would the christian afterlife is the hard one you know if you if you look at the other religions you know like reincarnate carnation is pretty easy to understand you die your spirit leaves your body and it goes into another baby somewhere yeah i'm back as one of becky's pets or one of Becky's pets, <laughs> or maybe a lizard in the, you know, out in the bushes somewhere. There's a lot of people that believe, believe that. that. Okay, so they, so that's that's easy. Um, another one that's easy is annihilationism. There is no God. There is no afterlife. There is no heaven. That's really easy to understand. Yeah. But understanding resurrection means that you have it before it forces you to deal with the fact that the entire Christian world tends to believe in the immortality of the soul which isn't in scripture, but it also forces you to re to examine time in a new way because we have eliminated the soul leaving the body at all ever. And if, if we do that, what we're talking about, we're recognizing that Paul is saying, not that your soul leaves your body, but that you are changed bodily. You are changed physically who you are. Mind, body, spirit is changed into a mortal person, from a mortal person to an immortal person. So I have an example. Yeah. This is a question. I'm not trying to be funny at all. I'm, I'm really trying to get to the bottom of this. So someone who has been eaten by shark, you know, their body is gone, no body. Mm-hmm. So their soul is at the bottom of the sea where the body was taken or in the sharks. Um, their soul is in the bottom of the sea where the sharks took them. Did you? Yeah, I really? think so. I'm talking about, so if someone dies, uh, they've been eaten or they okay. drown. In the, does, that, in, in, does that change the fact that that person has a whole resurrected body in the resurrection of the dead that we that we see has not happened yet? It's in the future. But Paul, but Jesus talked about in the present tense. In the resurrection right now, is that sharp bitten person whole? Mind, body, spirit, physically. I think the spirit is whole. I, well, 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 I oh, think okay. they, so they don't, you don't believe in bodies being raised. See, that's the so, problem here. No, I do believe in bodies being raised. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just said that the spirit left the body. I believe the spirit is somewhere. Okay. I believe the spirit is somewhere. Patricia, and I believe on the resurrection day. We, we don't need to argue. We need help. They will get okay. the final. I'm just, I'm raising um, a question okay. here because. But again, it brings up the time issue. And the issue is, is while, while, that's a time word, while that girl's body is in the shark's belly. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, I'm going to die in two weeks. <laughs> where, where's her soul? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you you use a lot of time mm-hmm. words, mm-hmm. all right, and you presume that souls leave bodies. And I'm asking you to see her as already resurrected. No, I'm not she was, res- was, she was resurrected left. from the beginning of eternity. She was born from the beginning of eternity. Jesus was crucified from the beginning of eternity. This universe was brought into existence whole, including past, present, and future. That's what I'm asking you to consider as an alternative to spirits leaving bodies, which is not in the Bible. I'm not saying her spirit left. My, that's a question. Where What's is question? what happens? Where is her soul? Okay. Well, what's the difference between soul and spirit? We're using them interchangeably, right? Well, we're spirit, soul, and body. We're with with tri- Okay. So when a person Three dies, points. they're dead. Body, soul, spirit. 
But that per doesn't mean that that person's not in the resurrection. So the body is gone, deteriorated, but you're saying the spirit and soul is in the resurrection? The resurrection is of her body. Jesus is going to raise her body. Is going to in the resurrection, on the resurrection day? And she's already there. We are in the resurrection. In the resurrection, people aren't getting married, Jesus said. In the resurrection, and, and, and where, did, where, did, where did Moses and Elijah come from? They were present with Jesus, but, and the Bible calls them glorified, resurrected men. Refers to them as glorified men. Where'd they come from? The future, because they're raised. And she's in the future resurrection, and you're in the future resurrection, and your dad's in the future resurrection, and y'all are probably playing cards and listening to Michael Jackson right now. Mm -mm. <laughs> in the resurrection, that wouldn't be heaven. I can tell you where. I can tell you. I can tell you that we're not. That would not I'm telling be you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to call. I'm going I'm to have a dinner, and I'm going to invite John Wesley and Frank Zappa, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Abraham Lincoln, and Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, I think Madame Curie would be a good one to put in too. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to keep listening to all the people who are probably having a good time right now. Bert, I hear. Time. I hear the word, the key word you're focusing on is whole. Because mm -hmm. when, if we think of when we die as we are, we are rising out of our body, breaking away from our body, that's like a being broken forever rather than a being whole forever. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And 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 it's it's a mental thing. We have to be able to grasp something mentally for to to take it in that okay, this this it may be the real deal here. That that we we are we are united with the package that we are now for eternity. Yeah. I, I think you're right. And I think the way Paul used it was the perfect metaphor. Um, we are living in a tent, but God's going to turn it into a house. Where yeah. is the word spirit, soul, and leaving bodies? They're not there because that's irrelevant. It, it would never have occurred to Paul. Paul said right after that, he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Correct. What was he referring to? He's, he's referring to right now we trust that we're going to be with the Lord face to face. Going to be. So you're talking in the future resurrection. Correct. We have to talk in time because we're in it. But I want you to know that when you talk in time like that, it also requires us to realize that that time is real. That future it does exist. We just can't see it from here. It is our future, but the resurrection is present. And we're in it. We're, we're enjoying it. We're, I mean, I'm imagining right now, but from what Paul said, what we should imagine is, is that details aside, being alive physically, just like you are right now, except in an immortal, imperishable body that doesn't hurt anymore and doesn't die anymore, and that we are doing things that we can't imagine with Jesus. So, but if we're in it right now, why would we need faith? Because we're in this mortal sinful body right now. And we trust two things. We trust that he's forgiven our sins and we trust that he's going to raise us. Those are the only two things he fixed that I can recall. That's That was his rescue mission. He was going to save us from sin and he's going to save us from death. And so that's what he came and did by being the firstborn of, of the, from the dead. Okay. When he died, we, we died. When he rose, we rose. But we did it in him vicariously, but we are going to rise too when we die. That, that so that we will be with him and like him in the resurrection. And in fact, the implication is that the resurrection is a present reality and it's just in our future. We can't see it from here. I believe all that, but I'm I'm stuck with um between death and resurrection what happens or what's happening and i and i hear you everything you know, I, I hear you say everything that, everything that, okay i died let, let's say i die today 
and the resurrection day is January 1st, 2099. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I die today. Here's the resurrection day. Okay. Am I either cremated or in a box somewhere? Yeah. Am I at resurrection day playing cards with Jesus? Yeah. Because now doesn't, because past and future don't matter anymore. In God's eternity, it's everything is happening at once. The past, the present, and the future are, are all a reality, the reality of God's created cosmos. They are, it's all here. We just, can't, we just can't see it in, because we're stuck. It's like being stuck in the frame of a movie. You know, you're in the middle of a movie. And the rest of the movie hasn't played yet. Like, a, like if a commercial comes on or the power goes off, you're so angry. What happens in the rest of the movie? We can't see it until the movie comes back on. Well, what's the movie? The movie depends on going from frame to frame to frame. It's a series of photographs. Well, we're in one frame right now. But what if you could see all of your frames? What if you could do a life review from the beginning of your life and see every moment all the way to the end of your life? And then beyond that, what happens? I'm in the resurrection, and I didn't. Movie, have, and I didn't have movie, you see it because then you see the reality for everybody is that we're all in it together. We're all in it together. We're, we're all raised, raised together. together. Nobody's waiting for you to get there. Yeah. And how about this, Bert? The movie's already been shot. The movie's yeah. already been shot. Yeah, they've already they've already. It's on the, the reel. It's, it's on the reel. Show. It's playing. We're in. We're in the show. And the scientists are saying simulation is what okay. they think may be a reality. Well, maybe that's where the fake comes in then, to, to believe that everything um, that we're talking about is happening that way. You have to have faith to believe that and not sight, because by eyes, you can't see it. Okay, so maybe, I, but but he, gave a, he gave us a glimpse, did he not, when he was getting ready to be thrown off the mountain and was that in Luke? Well, they were going to throw him off the mountain, and he just kind of disappeared. Uh, I don't remember it exactly like that, but I see where you're going. Yeah, that was, like, that was Nazareth, and and it said he he passed through the midst of him. I don't know what that the, means. I mean, they couldn't touch him. Well, I don't know that it says that, but it doesn't. But it to me, it implies that he had. But Some this is control. not the resurrected Lord, uh, Kathy. This is Jesus before he died. I know, but he had some power of time. Yes, he did. He did. He did. You're right. Um, the transfigure I, I think the transfiguration and the resurrection stories give us a glimpse of the risen Lord that can help us to understand what our existence will be like for eternity. But but the details are not given to us. And what is given to us are, is highly symbolic, especially the book of Revelation. Yeah. Which is really a retelling of Jesus' story in, in vivid um, symbolic pictures and images. Um, it's more about the past than it is about the future, but it does talk about the consolation of all things and the consummation and the reconciliation of all things in resurrection when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And we'll be raised people forever. Um, I don't know what we're doing for time. It's about 7.30. Well, let's take a little bit more time. We haven't heard from um, from Kia or from Heather. Uh, maybe some other people would like to share. Anybody else got something to say? Is, it, is this hard? I think I'm closer. I think, I mean, I was trying to really listen intently and, you know, have, come with a clean slate. And I think I'm a little closer to what you're teaching. The faith piece is helping me that we walk by faith and not by sight, that I can't see it physically with my eyes. I can't understand it in the physical, mm -hmm. but through faith that I can. I, and that's helpful for me, mm -hmm. for where I am right now. If you can believe, if you can trust that Jesus is, has forgiven you of your sins, you could think about this, is that you can trust that Jesus is going to take care of your eternity. And Paul says the way that he's going to take care of our eternity is the same way that he took care of sin. He died to sin, and he rose to eternal life. And so he's giving us both. And we receive both 
as a gift and we, and we just trust we're going to get it and stop worrying about whether we're going to have pets in heaven. We just don't know the details. What we want to do is try to get more biblical in our language and our language about going to heaven needs to change. And I just used it. Did you notice? Mm -hmm. So, so the idea is that heaven described in scripture is a, a present and not yet fully calm reality, re relational reality in Christ Jesus. It's not about us going there, but thy kingdom come. It's about us coming ever more fully. And as it approaches us, and as a resurrection day approaches, the everything is renewed. Everything is reborn. And we are we are changed from mortal to immortal. Now, do you can you prove that Jesus forgave your sins when he died on the cross? No, but you have faith that that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just asking you to consider doing the same thing as a possibility that that all of this pagan stuff about spirits leaving bodies m might not be very Christian, but there is a very Christian afterlife here that people are strangely unfamiliar with, even though we say it every Sunday in our creeds. I believe, I believe in the resurrection of the body. Yes, yes, I definitely do believe that. You know, I mean, heaven is, is another story. and We're not, we're not going there today per se, but I mean, I do believe heaven is a place. We can talk about that maybe next week or whatever. It's but more, I, but it's it much more, to, reducing it to only an afterlife place is a terrible mistake because Jesus teaches otherwise throughout his ministry. He speaks about the kingdom of heaven more than anything else, pretty yes. much. Yes. So, Mark, yeah. I, I, I'm noticing Becky. It looks like maybe Becky wants to say something. Hey, Becky, jump in, girl. <laughs> I think that as we've discussed this, it's impossible for us to understand the nonlinear time of God. And I think that it's also impossible for us to understand the physicality that we cannot comprehend that's going to be our body. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Nice. And, and I, I think we can't understand it, but as humans, we want to understand it. And the more we try to understand it, the more we're not going to be able to understand it. Right. That's where the faith comes in, that I have yeah. faith that God's nonlinear time is going to be good to me and that my physical body is going to be something so wonderful. I can't imagine it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not going to engage in argument and i'm not going to try to pretend that i know what it is and i think as humans that's what we're trying to do we're trying to figure out what it is and and tell everybody hey i got the secret i know the answer no you don't yeah yeah thank you, thank you. that was helpful where we are right now is Be is becky's beautiful simple short clarity yes real clarity and compare that to the best-selling book by alcorn on heaven <laughs> which is 500 pages long and completely does not have anything to do with the scriptural truth she just said. Absolutely. It's just speculation about whether we have TV in heaven. <laughs> well, well, I am going to have pets. Sorry, but I am. <laughs> Lots of snakes and birds and lizards. And... Go for it, Becky. Go for it, Becky. You're a critter girl. That's Thanks. great. She loved, <laughs> she loved them critters. I do. Thank you. <laughs> I want to come up your way and flip some of that tin. Okay. Um, come on. Now's a good time. Um, we are headed uh, next. Uh, I can come during the week without Patricia, maybe. But uh, we're going together for her birthday um, at the end of July. We're going to, to the Bahamas for the first time. So Nice. Sweet. Yeah. First time since and COVID. Since COVID. First time since COVID. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're ready to go back, and it's also so the 50th anniversary of the Bahamas. So it's kind of a it's, remember when we had the centennial back in 1976. <laughs> remember how horrible that was. <laughs> we may be running into a little of that. <laughs> not yeah. the same thing. It might not be. I hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to hear from anybody else who wants to say anything. If look, look, Kia, if either or you, Heather, want to just kind of listen today, that's cool. Just Give me an indication that we can move on because we're about to run out of time. And I, I haven't heard from you. They're being very quiet. Oh, uh, <laughs> they're both unmuted. They unmuted. Heather and Heather is now unmuted. Yep. I just, I mean, I just have to think it through. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Me too. That's what 
we all need to do is a little more. It wouldn't hurt some people to put on the thinking cap a little more frequently. Yeah. Um, um, you know, becoming a Christian doesn't mean you turn, you don't turn off your brain to become a follower. You turn it on. Uh, disciple means a person who studies under. Hello? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with studying. There's nothing wrong with reading. And this is how we get what we are, by asking good questions and hard questions and criti thinking critically about things and not just listening and taking in everything you hear that's amen. I've done that all my life and I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, so why don't, let me propose uh, um, next week, um, if you, uh, who's next? Who, we still got Kia. Kia, did you say anything? I saw your mic go off and then come back on. Hey. I didn't say anything. Um, I was letting Heather kind of speak. Um, I, I, I think that some of this conversation, it involves, and this is just my take, a little bit of science and a little bit of church, you know? So <laughs> that's hard for people sure. to kind of bring together when you think about it in the perspective of, you know, you want me to think of quantum physics and I'm on a, I'm on a basic biology level, right? So it's it's difficult. And um, and I know, you know, with my child sitting here, this has been difficult for her to mm -hmm. kind of hear this and and wrap her brain around it. And she's having conversation with me, but trying to listen at the same time. And, you know, I, I just think that a lot of it brings in science. And when you bring in the church and then you try to bring in a little bit of science, it's not going to, it, it's it's not a, a soup well tasty right now. Yeah. So I, I'm using science as an example. It, it just came when I realized what Jesus and Paul were saying, I realized it was compatible. It sounded compatible to me to all the stuff I've been reading in, you know, about, about physics, mm -hmm. and specifically about relativity, you know, um, which was Einstein. Einstein had two theories, you know, but I was using them exam as examples or as side proofs. I didn't mean them to be central. What's central to me, and I want Sam to hear this, is that most people find it comforting to think that when their loved ones die, that their souls leave their bodies and go immediately to be with Jesus. That's a comforting thought to them. What's the difference in that and saying that when they die, they're immediately at the resurrection with Jesus? They get to be with Jesus in both. The only difference is that one is a spiritual theory and the other one is a physical promise from Scripture. The physical theory comes from paganism. I mean, the spiritual theory that the spirit leaves the body, you know, uh, is pagan. The resurrection of the body is Christian. And it just so happens that if you, if the resurrection of the body is today, you will be with me in Paris, the day paradise, the day of your death is the day of your resurrection. That's compatible with what Einstein says about time, that the future is really in this universe. And that Jesus is there waiting on us, but he's not really waiting in that sense because he's waiting with us, but he's already there with us. We're wherever we, we're so many places in the space time love. It's, we're, we're so many places. Yeah. My fourth birthday party is just sitting right there to be re experienced if I could do it. But I can't go back in time and I can't go forward in time except really, really slowly <laughs> just by sitting around waiting with the rest of you. Um, but I hope that Sand understands and I hope any of any, but all of you understand that. You know, one there's very there are many things that are similar here. Yeah, when you die, you're immediately with Jesus. That's the important one. But the question is, is it a spiritual existence that happens in time, or is it a physical existence resurrection at the end of time? And and the scripture says the latter, and I vote for that. It's why I'm trying to teach to you. That doesn't mean that you have to believe that. It, it, uh, I've been working on this for a long time and I've written a lot and I've changed my mind a lot and I'm still learning. So let's just stay in the fight and keep learning. But it, for me, it's like, I think Becky said it better than anybody tonight. I wish, uh, I tell you what, I think I'm going to transcribe what she said <laughs> and just um, maybe send it out as a, 
meme or something because I thought that was great. Whatever she's, I, I mean, <laughs> that made sense to me. That I agreed great. with what she said a lot. Yeah, I liked it. She's a wise lady. Yeah, so go back and listen to the recording afterward and, and listen to what she said because, and, and just all that crap I said, forget that. <laughs> forget the slideshow. Now he just, says that just, Mike. Just, 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 listen to, just listen to Becky. <laughs> oh, Lord. I've enjoyed being with you all tonight, and I thank you for being here. Thank you, Becky, for your insights. Thank you for your yes. presence on our panel. We got Kia, Heather, Kathy, Gino, Patricia, and Mike, and um, and maybe more on um, Facebook. And Facebook, you never know. Yeah. Uh, Lord bless and keep every single one of you. Anybody got anything to say before we go? Oh, by the way, Sheila, uh, uh, I talked to uh, Bob just a little while ago, and she is still in the hospital, and they are still trying to get her heart from st to stop fluttering, and she's still having some pulmonary. Um, you know, with some stuff with her lungs too, um, that may be pneumonia. So uh, I don't, she, she may have been watching tonight, but I don't think she was strong enough to participate. Prayers for her. Everybody so please pray for her. Church. Yes. Please pray for her. Okay. Y'all have a great night. Bye. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye. What'd you say, Kathy? Uh, What'd she say? I think I she's thought, gone now. I thought she said something. Okay. I didn't hear. See you, Mike. All right. See you. Thanks, thanks for everything you said. You're welcome. Thank you, both of you. That was great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.